pack up about 40 mad people in the bus and carry them to the country and show them around. And at the end of the day, <clears throat> it was so good. He said, because <clears throat> you're so good, I'm going to let you swim in this swimming pool. Brought them to the swimming pool. And he said, okay, get in. Everybody just dived into the pool. And they were having a wonderful time. Some were bruised and some were broken bones and this and the other, but he looked at them and he said, how did you enjoy it? He said, it was very nice. He said, it was very nice. He said, well, because you behave so well, next time when I bring you back, I'll put water in this pool. I am asking you to dive with me into a pool that has water. I will dive in the deep end and come out in the shallow. You need to know some Bible to follow me today. Because this revelation that I'm bringing to you, you're aware of it. But you're not, it's, it's not God, not not even ministers that I talk to can explain this problem. My text, Colossians 2, verse 6 and 7. And they will throw it up if they can. As you have therefore received Jesus Christ the Lord, now watch the word in. Five times you will see in. And I want to ask you if you know what it means to be in Christ. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. Don't go so fast. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Well, what does it mean to be in Christ? Watch me. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. He has a body, and he is physically and uh, spiritually combined, but he has a physical body. How can you be in him? Anybody want to answer me? How can you be in Christ when he is physically seated at the right hand of the Father? What does it mean to be in Christ? As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. In Him. Rooted in Him. Built up in Him. Established in the faith in Him. Taught in Him. Abounding in Him. Giving thanksgiving in Him. All seven in hymns are there. But what does it mean? I only want one word from this text. It's rooted. The word I want to deal with is rooted in Christ. A lot of people are looking for the roots. Some are trying to import the roots from the country they came and bring it and plant it here and it's not going to work. It was just three people were arguing, the religious people saying. One said, well, my roots go back as far as the 15th century when the Protestant movement was born. The Muslim guy said, that's nothing. My roots go back to the 7th century when Muhammad was born. Well, the Jew said, I got you beaten. My roots went back to Abraham 15, 1600 years before Christ. Well, the other fellow didn't go to church. He said, I don't know what to tell you, but all our family records were lost in the flood. <laughs> I don't know where your root is, but if your root is in your ancestry, you better begin to think differently. 
If your root is into a political system or ideology, you need to think differently. If your root is, is in money or is in a career or is in some family history, I have news for you that the child of God, the Christian, his only root should be in Jesus Christ and nowhere else. God will have plucked you from anywhere and plant you in his son. I want you to understand what we are talking about. And this is my subject. No root, no fruit. No fruit, no future. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, my father will cut it off. Theme, doom if you're stunted. Do not take what I am saying today lightly. Because if you are not rooted in Christ, and if you are not growing in Him, you will never bear fruits in Him. And every branch in me, in me, in me, my, that doesn't bear, my father will cut it off. Do them if you're stunted. I check the meaning of the word stunted. It means to become like a dwarf and to stop growing. When the idea is, once you are planted in Christ, stay there. Bloom where you are planted. So let me go into this mystery. Of what it means to be in Christ. How can a billion people fit into this little six foot structure? When we say we're in Christ, it means that you belong to the body of Christ. And that when you got saved, the Holy Spirit took you out of Adam and transplanted you, transported you, and baptized you into the body of Christ. That's how you enter into Christ because Christ is the head and the whole church is the body. I am trying to let you understand that when this little body here called Deeper Life is a small model of the body of Christ. When God planted you here, he planted you in him and he expects you to stay here and to grow here and to bear fruits right here. I want you to get that point. So when you are in Christ, you are in his body. There's no other way that you could be in Christ except you are joined to the body. Baptized by one spirit into the body. Many scriptures So, you, you are in Christ by position, and now you have to stay there. This church, this little body here, is Christ's body, and when you belong to this body, there are four words I want to use. Planted. Replanted, transplanted, and grafted. Let's talk about grafting. Grafting works if it's the same kind. If you want to graft an avocado, you have to take an avocado branch and graft it to an avocado tree. You cannot take an apple branch 
and, and graft it to a mango tree. You will get mangled. You won't get anything else. It wouldn't work. The nature has to be one. So I am getting to the point where it matters that you stay faithfully committed to the church God has planted you in. That's what I want you to get. That you have no lease or license to leave the church unless there is, like I explained, necessary and warranted grounds for you to be transplanted. You cannot walk out of this body here and go to another body that doesn't behave, believe what you believe and try to graft yourself in. It will not work. Grafting doesn't work in the church. Transplanting will. If you want to go to another church, you've got to get released from this church and accepted by the other church you're going and they will we can transplant you from one tree to another and nobody will feel the pain. But when you want to leave on your own and be grafted somewhere else, it's not going to work. You cannot graft yourself, neither can you replant yourself. You have to stay where God planted you. That's, that's all right. Long time ago, we had a, a lime tree somebody gave us. And we wanted to plant it. So we planted near the kitchen. One week later, we realized that's not a good place to plant it. So we moved it and brought it about 10 feet away from the house. Well, we realized that where we planted it had some, some things in the ground there that, that was not going to nourish the tree, so we decided to move it. So we, we dig it up, dug it up again, and then we move it and brought it in front because we had no, no, no flowers, nothing in front. But then we realized this is a lime tree. And we don't want nobody coming to home and saying our house is sour. So we decided for the fourth time to move the lime tree and put it as far back as we can. Guess what? Why? Too much digging up and replanting. It will never grow again. And why some Christians... I'm getting into trouble just now, you know. Why some Christians never grow is because they have moved too much. And for whatever little reason, they dig up themselves because they don't think this church is good and that church is better. And so they replant themselves. They go there and in six months they find, uh-uh, this is not good for me. I'm going to go. You look, it's okay to look for a church. It's a wonderful thing to search. Search and search and search until you find the right church. It's just like looking for a husband or a wife. You don't just snatch the first person that comes by. You check them out. You find out their history. You get to know them a little bit before you join together. And that's the way you should search for a church. Prayerfully and carefully. But when you find it and you know it's a perfect match then you should get married and stop the courtship. Too many people are having courtship, relationship with the church, the body of Christ, and not really getting married to the body. You have to join the body. And once you've joined the body, let no man pull you asunder. Let nobody pull you out of your church. Let nobody influence you to leave your church because God has joined you here. And the thing is that once you're here, your part is to nourish the body. How many of you starve yourself every day? 
Looking at some of us, I can tell you, we are not starved. We nourish ourselves. We take vitamins, minerals, tonic. We exercise. We try to eat right and do things right. Why? So we can have a healthy body and we can nourish the body. So I'm asking you the question, what have you been doing to nourish this body here? How are you nourishing this body? How much care have you given to this body? If you were joined to this body, you would want to nourish it. Yeah, stop the texting. So you're rooted in Christ. That's where your root should be. In this body which represents Christ. And once you are rooted here, you are to bloom where you're planted or there will be doom if you're stunted. This is the shortest sermon I'm going to preach. Luke 13. Let's stay here a little bit and finish. Luke 13, 6. In verse 5, it he said, I tell you, nay, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. And with that concept, he gave them this parable. He spake also this parable unto them. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. It was planted by the owner. It wasn't just scattered or left to grow on its own. He planted it. He came and sought fruit. When you plant something, like we have a, an avocado tree in, in the back of our house, and when it was this small, my wife went looking for fruit. Can you believe that? <laughs> I said, babe, it got to grow at least a few, five years. But every year she would go and look. To see if there's an avocado on the tree. Well, the neighbor had one. And, and the neighbor got one big one one year. And she said, look at that. <laughs> you know, she went and talked to the, the, well, this is avoca, the avocado tree. And she threatened the tree. <laughs> Literally. She said, tree? I'm talking truth here. Last year, she told the tree, she said, tree, if you don't bear... I will cut you down. <laughs> Would you behold that we got six big avocados this year? I'm not kidding you. Six big ones from a little tree. I don't know if that tree had airs, but the tree became fearful. And this tree said, this woman looked like she's serious. I am going to have to do something about it. I better bear or oh, I'll be doomed. When you plant something, you look forward to it bearing fruit. You will go and look. And if it's not bearing fruit, you will probably come to the decision that she said, I'll cut you down. So this man had a fig tree. It's not a banana tree. It's a fig tree. Uh, there are some members in the church who have fig tree and they give me figs. I like figs. Figs is very good. Very healthy. As a matter of fact, when, when uh, Isaiah made a poultice for King Hezekiah, he made it out of figs. 
There's some medicinal purpose in figs. So if you can eat figs, not bananas particularly, figs is a little different kind of thing like that. So he planted this fig tree in his vineyard and he came looking for fruit and he found none, none, nada, zero, nothing. So God has planted you in this body here. And if he would have come today and look at your life, what kind of fruit will he find, if any? It's a good time to look at your life and forget about other people. Am I bearing fruit? Hear what John the Baptist said. Oh, adulterous and sinful generation. Jesus looked at his generation and said, Oh, adulterous people committing adultery, spiritually and physically. Oh, adulterous generation who had warned you from the wrath to come to flee. I wonder what God will say about this generation that we live in. How would he describe it? I think he's going to say, you sodomites. You sinners, you ungodly. If you don't repent, you'll be in trouble. John the Baptist said, for the axe, you know what's an axe? Is laid at the root. The day you got saved and God planted you in this body, he also put an axe by the root. He is ready to cut down any tree that's not bearing fruit. Take me seriously. I am the vine, you are the branches. Watch me. Every branch in me that bears no fruit, my father will cut it off. This is his body. You are planted in this body. You are expected to bear fruit. I wonder where are the fruit? Many kinds of fruit, and I, I'm, I'm going to tell you there are two types. One is soul winning. The application, he says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruits. That means go into the world and bring forth the fruit of repentance and bring me a harvest. And that's wonderful. But there is another kind of fruit that he's talking about that's in him. If you are planted in him and you grow fruit, you will grow the fruit like him. Now I refer to the fruit of the spirit. Follow me carefully. Fruits are not gifts. Don't you ever think you're going to say, Lord, give me love. Pray if you want. He's already given a measure of love and a measure of faith to start you up. He's given you startup capital that you have to exercise and develop. So you pray for love. What's going to happen? He brings into your world somebody that's despicable and hateful. And he watches to see if you are going to manifest the fruit of the spirit called love. And if you cannot and you don't have the strength to love the unlovable, you are not bearing the fruit of the spirit. You are still Adamic and you are working from the senses and you are working from your preference. And because this is a nice person, I will like this person. But you see this person? I cannot like this person. You are carnal. And yet in your sins, you need to repent and come. And begin to bear the fruit of the Spirit. Can I hear somebody agree with me? Too many 
Big branches are, are fruitless and not bearing the fruit of the Spirit. I tell you, fruit bearing and fruit growing is not an easy thing. Gift. Gift is, is, is easy. I could give you a gift and you take it, you open it, you use it. But if you were to bring forth a child, if you were to develop something and give birth to it, it's painful. From, from solid experience. Next year, I will enter 50 years of ministry. 50 years of preaching this gospel next year. I have a little experience. I've known the Lord for 49 long years in intense relationship with my Heavenly Father and with the Lord. I can say by grace, I know Him and He knows me. My name is written down. I am a child of God. I've been called by the Lord, chosen by Him and anointed Him to last for 50 years in this generation. And I praise the Lord for it with all humility. I confess it's the grace of God. And I know I didn't bear fruits. And I wonder why. Why I was stunted. Where are the fruit? And God had to put the opposite of every fruit in my life so that I could manifest the fruit or else what is the fruit for? For me... In my world, my life, I had, had, I had probably a lot of reason to hate some people. I had a good reasons to want to put some people out because of what they've done to me. But you know, he said, love your enemies. And I wonder why he said that. Because you will have enemies. You don't make them. They just come from I don't know where, which devil sent them. But suddenly they become your enemy. They don't like you. They don't want you. They don't need you. They bad talk you. They shun you. What are you supposed to do? Treat them the same way, right? I heard a few yes and I heard a few. No! That's the opportunity God has given to you to manifest the love and the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Watch this. But what do I benefit? Why should I love un the unlovable? Why should I forgive him? Seven times is enough. A tree does not bear fruit for itself if you have a mango tree or a coconut tree whatever kind of tree you have and it's bearing fruit and you go to pick the fruit and the fruit said, the tree said oh, oh 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 don't touch my fruit this is my fruit well, what's going to happen a tree doesn't bear fruit for itself. The fruit is for the enjoyment and pleasure of others. So don't you think that you have to get something in return because you made a sacrifice and you went of the way to love somebody. My wife sent me um, Friday night 10 o'clock to drop some food for somebody. I didn't grumble. I found it a joy and a pleasure to leave my home with my pressure out of my anxiety blowing away. And I jumped in that van and I went to that house and I delivered it. I have to be obedient to my wife else you know what's going to happen. <laughs> She's going to say, you can't give stale food. I said, let me carry it tomorrow. No, you got to carry it fresh. I cook this and you got to take it. So when the opportunity comes, you've got to manifest that love and do not expect a reward from it. As a matter of fact, the people you do good to never return the favor. God uses a stranger 
somebody else who you don't know to come and bless you. So don't expect from those that you minister to. Bible said, when you have done all, tell yourself you are an unprofitable servant. Tell yourself there is no reward in this for you. But you've got to manifest the fruit. Because when he comes looking for fruit and he finds none, you better bloom where you are planted or there is doom if you're stunted. And let's follow up. Then he said to the dresser of the vineyard, Look, behold, three years. Three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and I find none. Verdict. Cut it down. Why burden the ground? Why is it occupying space when something else could grow and take the nourishment? And the vine dresser who thinks that he knew more than the owner said, Master, Lord, let it alone for one more year. I'm going to give it a fourth chance. I will dig around it. And I will manure it. And if it bear fruit, well. And if not, then after that, we'll cut it down. God is willing to give us a fourth chance to bear. If you don't bear, beware. You see people leave the church. And you say, hmm, that's because it's not a good church. Wrong. God has a way of cutting branches off and bringing new branches. Branches that he's willing to. To allow, to grow, and to bring forth fruit. Now the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. Didn't say happiness. Happiness is an American fruit. And you have to pursue it. Joy is something that happens inside of you uncaused. You don't have to get a big gift or some money for this joy to come in that will make you happy and as soon as it's finished you're going back to sadness but the joy of the spirit is an ever bubbling source of unspeakable joy that no sorrow even if somebody died in your family there still would be something inside of you holding you because the joy of the Lord has become your strength it's the joy of the Holy Spirit it must be in your life love, joy, peace peace what's that? is there Peace in your home? Or is it filled with arguments? Listen, it's only my wife and I alone at home. And we could have an argument if we want to. Be real with you. Because my wife is very fussy. When it comes to housekeeping. I am allotted a small section of the house. It's called my study. And she wants to get in there too. And I put a sign, keep out. Because she doesn't like how my books are scattered. This is, she is a clean fanatic. Oh, she should make the advertisement call, Mrs. Clean. And I love it. I love a clean house. I love the smell of a fresh sheet and pillowcase. And so, she labors to keep the house clean. 
And baby? Thank you. Thank you. Now, she's, she gave me permission to say that I am the boss of the house. He looked, three years found nothing, no love, no joy, no peace. We have peace in our home. There are moments we could disagree, but I have learned the art of peace. Men, listen to me. Do not, for God's sake, answer your wife on every issue. A woman, <clears throat> a man is, is right only twice in his life. When she says yes, and when he says no. Men, you have lost your rights. I love, I could never forget what um, Patel did for Candace wedding. He uh, demonstrated something that stayed with me forever and I love it. Said to the bridegroom, the dolaha, take your hand. Made the bride put a hand. Put your hand on top. Say, bridegroom, Put your hand on top of your wife now. Because this is the last time you're going to get the upper hand. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. <laughs> Whatever, sir, it takes to keep peace in your home, you make the sacrifice. Do not back answer your wife. It will only create more argument because you know you're right. <laughs> no, so, fellas? You know you're right. And she knows she's right. And if both of you claim right, <laughs> husband, hear this boy, 45 years in it. Always say, whether you like it or not, it's lovely. <laughs> and that finished the argument. If you come now, you'll see Christmas tree already gone up. I said, babe, it's too early. No. I said, okay, you're right. <laughs> Don't bother, you can't win. She put this big bonnet on the mailbox. When I put up the flag from the house, I can't see the flag. I don't know if the mail came because the flag is still up or down. I said, babe, could you put a smaller one, please? No. I like that. I said, yes, sweetheart. It looks beautiful. I'm not kidding you. This is real. You want peace in your house? Agree with your adversary quickly. <laughs> so what you actually, Pastor Jerry, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, you're, the, you're, the, you're the champion of agreeing. I know how she takes advantage of you. But you have the fruit of patience like nobody else. This guy too. See him here? Oh, these brothers. I don't know about you yet. I have to find I gotta find out about you. What I'm saying is that fruit has to be born. It's not a gift. It's cultivated. You grow in it and it grows inside of you. Long suffering. I have the gift of long suffering. I've been married for 45 years. That's a gift. Oh. 
let me stay close at home. Family life. There is nobody who is going to torment you more, attack you more, frustrate you more than the people in your own home. I didn't hear that. There's a mic up here. Say it again, brother. So what happens? When you see people in the public, even if they offend you, and they say sorry, oh, that's okay. But let your wife do it now. Or let your children do it now. The tiger in you comes out. You're macho in your own home. You better respect me. I'm the boss here. Might be true financially. You might be bringing more. Sometimes the wife does. But you have to manifest the fruit of long suffering. How long have you been suffering? One week? Oh, come on. You just started the course one on one. You should be in the marriage class. You'll hear about long suffering. But not just in the family where it's so obvious and it's so strong. That's where God wants you to be a Christian. In your home, charity begins, love should be shown, patience should be exercised. Long suffering should manifest. When you can do it at home, you could do it anywhere else. No root, no fruit. If you're not rooted in Christ, in the body, you will never bear the fruit of the Spirit. It's not a gift. It's something that's cultivated and grown inside of you until you become like Christ. Because you've been grafted in him, you take his nature, his nature grows inside of you, and you will manifest all the qualities of Jesus Christ. No root, no fruit. No fruit, no future. The axe. Cut you off. Doom if you're stunted like this. Air marked. A red. When we wanted to cut trees down here, we take a spray can and we put a red X on every tree that has to be cut. I can see the red X in some people's lives. You got one more year. God is giving you time. To manifest the Christ that's in you. The world don't want to see church members. The world don't want to hear sermons. They want to see them. Somebody said, go preach. Use words if you have to. Let your life be that shining example. Amen. So bloom where you're planted. Don't seek transplant unless it's necessary. God planted you in this body. I want you to be rooted here. Roots, let your roots go down deep so that your fruit will be abundant. Amen. Stephen, Pastor, Stephen is going to come and then you will come and help close up. I, I want you to understand that being in Christ and being in the body is the same thing. So if anybody asks you what it means to be in Christ, it means I'm in the body. If any man be in the body, he's a new creature because the life of the body flows through him. For that reason, only the dead in Christ who belongs to the body is so easy for the rapture because you belong to the body. The dead in Christ shall rise. Amen. I love you.
I want you to restudy the last four sermons I preached on the body. Beep, beep, the shepherd and the sheep. That's a good one. Then, help me. Fusion without the confusion. What was the last one? Partner checking out the notes. Get the tapes, restudy them, and understand you belong to this body. If you haven't joined this body yet, you are not under my covering. How to function with the unction. And today, no rule. There's four sermons. We're going to make standard until the church grasps it. I'm going to be having some pastors seminar, teaching the pastors. This is the missing concept in the church. This is why we have so much confusion and running around to and fro. In the last days, Daniel 12, 4 says, many shall run to and fro. Settle down. Be rooted. Grounded. Bear fruit. You know, one of the attractions of deeper life, uh, one of these days I uh, will print out the culture of deeper life. One of the cultural marks of deeper life is the love that you feel and the warmth that you get when you come into this assembly. Is that true? Amen. Amen. So, take your time. No way too long. I want to get married to you, spiritually speaking, in this body and make you part of it. If you're not a member and you've been coming here, you need to become a member of the body officially. See, it's like, it's another whole sermon, but forgive me. You, you shack up with somebody. <laughs> somebody came to visit me uh, Friday. A couple, they've been living together for 11 years. Not married. Pastor, we would like to get married. I say, well, wonderful, that's, that's the best thing you can do. Well, did you put up your, your wedding bands as we say, oh, get you married? Yeah, I have it in the car. I said, go bring it, let me see it. I looked at the marriage license. I said, you want to get married now? They say, yes. I said, okay, boop, 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 boop. I pronounce you man and wife. Done. You see that little piece of paper? Makes the biggest difference in the world. It gives you a lot of advantages. You don't have that little piece of paper. You could be together for how long? It doesn't really count. Membership in this church is not merely membership in Foursquare. It's joining the body of Christ. And that gives me the privilege and the humility and the opportunity to serve you and cover you and bring you under the umbrella of headship, not lordship. Understand that there are seven ships I talk to you about. Four belongs to Christ and three belongs to the church. The four that belongs to the Lord is lordship, kingship, headship, and ownership. That's his. What belongs to us is sonship, fellowship, and Friendship. They call you friends. So, I humbly and respectfully submit to you that you follow the word of God and that you obey and that you become a member of this body, not of the denomination, the body, so that once you join to this body, I can have and I will have to give account of you. If you're not a member of this body, I will stop saying church and I will stop saying deeper life. I will be using the term body now because this is what we are. This concept needs to hit you. We are members of one body and we need to nourish this body and we need to grow this body and this body must be strong and healthy. Can I hear an amen? Amen. amen.
If this is not a heart of a loving pastor, I don't know what is. This man represents love, unity. He loves you. He loves us. And the reason he's pouring out his heart and he's going so deep into the word is because of his unfailing love for us. I want to encourage you this morning to grasp that love, to partake of that love. A few years ago, we, before we bought our home, we were in an apartment, and for some reason, we just got overwhelmed with roaches. I don't know how many of you had that problem before. Just overwhelmed with roaches. And we tried everything. And, you know, we, actually, we had some friends come over one time, Pastor Watson, and I'm sitting here, and they're sitting there, and we're eating. I had just cooked dinner, and there's a roach walking behind them. And I'm looking at my wife, to, and it's, we've all had, well, I don't know if we all, but we certainly have. But check this out. So we tried all the cheap things, Walmart, Kmart, everything. You tried everything, and, they, and you, you do some damage. But eventually, a friend of mine's at work, he said, Steve, you got you, you to gotta try this. He said, I had roaches from hell, and it got taken care of. We've never had it. We're still in the same place. So I said, I got to check this out. So I go down to this place. And the guy says, well, these are the things that you need. And he says, you need to take this can and spray this can he told us where. So I said, is this the thing, the magic thing that's going to kill them? And he says, no. He says, well, why am I spraying this? He says, you see, before you kill them, you want to, what's the term when you cannot give birth? Sterilize them. He says, before you kill them, you want to sterilize them because when you sterilize them, they cannot reproduce. And this morning, as what Pastor is saying, I want, to, I want to encourage you because the reason that the enemy wants to pull you out is because he wants to... Listen, there's nothing worse than a backsliding or a Christian that's just turned away from God than a Christian that cannot reproduce himself. And if the enemy can get you to just focus on you and what's going on with you and what's happening with you and who didn't speak to you and who didn't look at you and who didn't appreciate what you did and who is not seeing what you do, where are your, where, where is your eyes? Where is your vision? It's on you. And it's not on the lost. So he has sterilized you and and he stunted you so if he can just pull you out like pastor was saying about the lime tree this morning we just pull you out he's still keeping you a christian i'm still a christian i'm just moving i'm just moving i'm still a christian he's 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 defeating you and he wants you to think that you're all that in a bag of chip and we ain't Because you can't produce. We recently bought a home in, in the backyard. I, I, I found a Julie mango tree for some Chinese folks down on Pine Hills. And I planted it, and it's growing really, really beautiful. And then a friend of ours gave me a plant called a lychee, Pastor Binky. And I planted it maybe five feet. And within days, it died. My wife and I, we paid $85 for this tree. The first tree we bought, the second tree, a friend gave it to me. I planted it, and it died. Well, what the heck? The, the Julie mango tree is doing fine. And so when I, I was in the backyard, and we were cleaning. My wife and I were cleaning. We were cutting them some, some other trees, and, and I was pulling the rake, and I found this thing. And I pulled on it, and I started pulling on it and pulling on it. And literally, it was a piece of rebar, Pastor Bar. This long for where I pulled on it. And the trees that I had planted was sitting right next to this rotted metal that was incapacitating its growth and killing it. You are here, and this church is growing and it's vibrant. God has planted you here. You may go somewhere else that it looks green, but God put you here for a reason. 
God is going to make sure and see to it that you grow here. You don't know what's over there. Don't be fooled by the enemy this morning. I would encourage you, those who haven't joined our family yet, we love you, whether or not you join the family. So why not be part of the family? We love you. And not to the people, but to the issue of, of moving. Why move? Stay connected. We're growing. A couple weeks ago, 27 people joined this body. Listen, things that's growing is alive. Things that's growing is alive. We have a man of God that been, was, been, said 49. Next year will be 50 years. I want to encourage you this morning. We love you. God love you. If you're not on board, come on board. Amen. Stand to your feet.